비욘디 시청자 여러분 안녕하십니까 어, 오늘 특별 또 라이브 방송을 준비했는데 일요일 잘 쉬고 계신지 모르겠습니다 오늘은 굉장히 특별한 손님을 모셨습니다 어, 독일 하이델베르그 대학의 안과 주임 교수이신 어, 닥터 아우파트 선생님을 모셨습니다 어. 네. 안녕하십니까 저는 어, 아우파트입니다 어, 저는 어, 사, 독일 사람입니다 um, I'm from Heidelberg uh, University I'm a professor and chairman there And uh, just attending the KSRS Congress here, talking about our research, and it's my pleasure now to talk a little bit about how I decide for special premium intraocular lenses. If I can have the slides, please. Yeah. 어제 오늘 어, 한국 백내장골절 수술학회 KSRS가 서울에서 있었거든요. 거기 참석자 한국에 오셨고 어, 여러분도 관심 많으신 그 백내장 노안 수술할 때 어떻게 어, 그 프리미엄 렌즈 인공 수정체를 사용하는 데서 결정을 하시는지 거기에 대해서 오늘 말씀을 해 주시겠습니다. Okay. Slides, please. Yeah. Okay, this is the title of my my presentation. Uh, normally, you can talk almost two three hours about that topic, but I try to put it in like 10 minutes to give some basic ideas here. Before I start, that I show you where I come from. This is Heidelberg, one of the most prettiest cities in Germany, an uh, old city founded in 1196, as you can see. And the University of Heidelberg is a very old, one of the oldest in the world, actually. You see here, it was founded in 1386. And uh, it's a very, very good university. And I'm very proud of being there. The ophthalmology department exists already 200 years. These are all the chairmen for all this time. So we have a very long tradition. When we talk now about refractive intraocular lens surgery, we're talking about the patient who wants to be free of spectacles. And uh, we can treat uh, hyperopia, myopia, astigmatism, or so-called presbyopia, which is something that you have, of course, when you get over 40, 45, when you need reading glasses. When we do this, uh, we also do the same surgery as we do in cataract surgery. And if we want to correct for distance and near, we have different options. We have the monovision, which we can do with any kind of intraocular lenses, mostly monofocal or monofocal plus lenses. When we want to correct for distance and intermediate, but still leave reading glasses, then we use monofocal plus or EDOF. But if we want to have free uh, spectacles in all distances, then trifocal systems or special complementary systems are uh, important or are the only ones we can take. And uh, we are talking about this now. We have a lot of optical principles, uh, diffractive optics, segmental, refractive optics, aspherical optics, pinhole optics, wavefront uh, shaping technology, and high order aberrations in the monofocal plus. So these are a lot of different options and a lot of doctors get confused. It gets even worse if I show you what we can use in Germany. So you see here a lot of different type of monofocal plus lenses, need of lenses, and trifocal lenses. And for a lot of doctors, the question is, uh, what, what shall I use and what is good and what is bad? And this is very difficult sometimes to decide. But I have to say, it's not really selecting the right patients for multifocal or a premium lens. It's actually selecting the right lens for the patient. And there are a couple of factors we should think about. So which IOL for whom? That is the question here. And what would be the best uh, a choice? Problem is sometimes the patient and the doctor speak a different language. So what the patient is near or distance or intermediate, it's not the same for the doctor. Everybody thinks differently because the patient is a different education. So we need to know if the patient has a wish for spectacle independence. Yes, then we have to check for a lot of things, ocular pathologies, ask for their visual preferences, ask for what they expect from the surgery. If they don't have a wish for spectacle independence, I wouldn't talk them into multifocal lenses. We can just apply standard monofocals or monofocal plus, and if he needs some glasses, we can prescribe. A lot of elderly people are not really so much interested in that. If the patient comes actually for the purpose of getting rid of his glasses for presbyopic lens exchange, then we have to check the different type of patients. We have the ametropic patient who never had spectacles, so he is very demanding in terms of good vision afterwards. If the patient was hyperopic, he usually has bad uncorrected vision, and it's uh, I'm pretty okay with anything that comes. 
If he is post LASIK myo patients, he used to know how good he can see in the near, but he is also not used to use spectacles anymore. So he wants to have spectacle independence. So patients come for presbyopic lens exchange. It's usually a younger patient. It's still working, actually. He cannot get out of work for a long time, so he doesn't need a long uh, story after the surgery. He may be uh, demanding. He has already before good vision, and he in expects a return of investment because he pays money for it, for the lens and for the entire surgery. So he himself sees himself more as a customer and not as a patient. And usually these people are also quite active in checking the internet for their needs. So for these patients, we have special needs for the profession. We also have to check what, what is important in, in the private life and the hobbies and so on. And uh, usually he makes his own uh, decision and has the money for it. And he thinks usually that everything we do is with lasers, but that's actually not true. If the patient comes for cataract surgery, that's usually an older patient, usually retired, has less demands, has already bad vision because he has cataract. He is just happy if he gets better vision. He views himself as somebody who is sick, who is a patient. And usually these elderly people are not so much uh, informed. That's quite interesting. He, used, he is used to have reading glasses. He is used to have dysphotopsia due to cataract. He usually gets his device from his children or daughter or partner or whatever. And he very often lets the doctor decide. So this is also a different type of uh, patient group. But at the end, he also thinks we do everything with lasers. So when we look at the patient's uh, selection criteria, it is important to differentiate myopia, hyperopia, astigmatism, his preferences, if it's reading or driving, out or his profession. And we also have to look at the personality. If it's a too critical person, then some of the very modern lenses can be cumbersome and problematic, and you have to explain a lot, and patient will never be happy. We are actually... Uh, uh, good in telling the patients that we do excellent medicine, and that is why they have high demands. So happiness is not enough for them. Euphoria is what they expect, mm -hmm. and that is actually a problem. Coming from the selection, if he is myopic or hyperopic, we know that certain lenses, for example, in hyperopia, work, work very well. Even small, norm, normal monofocal plus or EDOF lenses can be enough for a hyperopic patient to achieve good vision in all distances. Whereas the myopic patient has much more needs for the near and he needs some optics that have good near addition. So trifocal lenses, even sometimes elderly uh, bifocal lenses with high near addition. Critical sometimes is the ametropic patient because he is not used to wear anything and there you really have to hit the target very good. If the patient has specific preferences, for example, he will read a lot, yeah, like an academic person and wants to do that without glasses, then of course you have to focus on the near. But is he doing like outdoor sport or golfing? He has more uh, uh, a need for intermediate and distance vision. Uh, or we can also check it in a different way if we can say these are the profiles of the different lenses that are available. But let's go on and come to the conclusion because I want to sum up this now. It's a very complicated topic. Uh, we can talk hours about it, but I think you got some of the basics. So patient selection for multifocal lens depends on the medical condition, his personal preferences, profession, and his personality. Um, it also depends on the optical principle, the visual preferences, the side effect profile. We didn't talk about that, but the trifocal lenses usually have quite a bit of side effects and the patient's refractive status. So the conclusion is actually not uh, always to find uh, uh, the right patients or the right lens. It's actually to find out who is the wrong patient for a premium lens so you avoid uh, uh, some problems and the, you avoid disappointment of the patient. And we must be aware, we always think we are, we are the best because we do surgery, patients afterwards are happy and we never have complaints. But you must be aware that we are fooling ourselves sometimes. Only one out of 20 unhappy patients usually bothers to complain. The others just walk out and tell other people about the bad experience they had. So we must be very careful selecting the patient, must do a good job and also must talk to the patient, consult them, and then we will have good outcomes and happy patients. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, uh, thank you for coming to the, uh, the After the Rain studio. Yeah. And uh, there is a message. So welcome to Korea, Professor Alfa. <laughs> yes, I hope you. you ha you're having a lovely day here. So far, yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay.
And uh, um, can you uh, tell a little about uh, your just the personal the connection with Korea? Oh, there, there, there are some very personal connection because I'm married to a Korean woman. Yeah, so my wife <laughs> is one of the reasons I'm very often here. Mm -hmm. And the the other reasons is that I also have an active exchange uh, with Korean doctors. I had Korean fellows who come to Heidelberg and spend a year with me or spend a couple of months working in in my clinic. So uh, from a professional and personal point of view, uh, I'm very much connected to Korea, and I like Korean food. <laughs> Okay. 어, 그, 이, 그, 노안 백내장 수술, 수술 이후에 안경을 가능한 안 쓰고 싶어 하시는 거, 아, 그런 환자분들이 점점 늘어나면서 의사들이 이걸 결정하고 또 환자랑 커뮤니케이션 하는 게 상당히 어렵거든요. 근데 지금 잘 말씀을 해 주셔가지고 상당히 도움이 됐을 거라고 생각합니다. I think your talk was very informative both to the doctors and the patients. Okay. And, uh, uh, so that there are more the welcoming messages. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I see that. Yeah. Yeah, I feel very, very welcome. Thank you very much. Uh, and uh, uh, when uh, do the eye interocular lenses are uh, coming to the market, or even before the market, and that you are interested in uh, the, the new technologies and uh, mm. uh, the you do some of the experiment to, uh, to with it and how do you uh, to prepare or to, to evaluate yeah. the new yes. uh, the technology? Yeah, that's a good question. We uh, in, in Heidelberg, in my clinic, I have a big laboratory where we have all the um, machinery to evaluate uh, optics of intraocular lenses and other things. And uh, usually, actually, sometimes the companies, before they go on the market, they come with the prototypes of their lenses and we test them in the lab and we tell them, okay, this is good, this is bad, this had advantages. We can actually uh, simulate the vision a patient has, will have if he has a lens pretty good, actually, nowadays with our machinery and uh, uh, the software we have. So we know already before we Im implant the lens what will be the outcome approximately. And, uh, and then when uh, the lens is on the market, and sometimes even a pre-market release is given to us, and in the clinic we implant the lens, evaluate the patient, follow them up, uh, do a lot of testing with them in order to find out what is the best lens or what is the outcome of the lens. So we get a pretty good idea of almost every lens uh, beforehand and then during controlled studies, which is very important. Yeah. 어, 나오기 전에 미리 테스트를 하고 그거를 환자한테 적용하기 전에 이 렌즈의 장점이 뭐고 렌즈의 문제점이 뭔지 다 파악을 하셔서 학회에 발표를 해주셔서 의사들한테 많이 도움이 되고 있습니다. That is very helpful to the, uh, the cataract surgeons, uh, the, that information I mean. Yeah, it is important because it's also company independent. And uh, the surgeon usually only has the information from the company who produces the lenses and who wants to sell the lenses, of course. And uh, therefore, the information has a bias, which is understandable. And uh, uh, most of the time, the companies are not really telling you uh, something wrong, but of course, in better, uh, uh, better ways. And we can do that in a very objective way so that the doctor gets information and can decide himself what kind of intraocular lens I would like to offer to their patients. Okay. Uh, and uh, uh, you have visited many of Korean the clinics. Yes. And uh, do you see any difference uh, between uh, the Koreas and the, the European the clinics? Yeah, first of all, um, there's a lot of clinics that do a very high volume. Mm -hmm. So they have a lot of experience. They do 10,000 surgeries or 15,000 or whatever. Uh, then it is extremely well organized. The whole uh, setup to uh, examine the patient, one machine after the other, is done uh, very, uh, very fast and very efficient. Mm -hmm. And uh, also the, the surgery, I observed a lot of surgeries. I was in the operating room with the doctors. It's perfect, it's very good. So we have an extremely high standard here in, in Korea. And uh, in Germany, we also have quite high standards. I would say that the volume some of the clinics are doing is higher in Korea here. Yeah, uh, uh, but otherwise, I think it's very competitive um, to to some of the setups I've I've seen in or we we have in Germany. But actually, I went this last two two weeks. I went to let's say twelve clinics, and everything every clinic was excellent. Really, I have to say that. 
한국의 의료 수준이 굉장히 높고 근데 독일과 비교해서 굉장히 많은 수술을 하고 효과적 효율적으로 돌아가고 있는 걸 봤다고 하십니다. Uh, so uh, I think we have to, to close the, the this session. Okay. And the, would you uh, the remark on uh, the, 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 as a closing? Some some closing something? remarks. Yeah, I can can say something. Uh, um, I think we learn quite a bit from the meetings, from visiting doctors uh, about uh, ophthalmology, and especially with the uh, surgery that we are doing mostly. He and, and myself doing cataract refractive surgery. Uh, we know that this is a, a very delicate uh, and very fine uh, a surgery uh, that needs a lot of preparation and a lot of training. And uh, the standards in Korea are extremely high. Uh, uh, I really have to say that. And I think we see better and better outcomes. Uh, a lot of complications that used to be 10 years ago are not there anymore. And I think this is a very good, uh, good thing that we see here. And I'm really looking forward in the next couple of years uh, uh, to share that with my Korean colleagues and also to learn from my Korean colleagues. So thank you very much. Thank you again for coming to this studio. Thank you. Thank you. 네, 감사합니다. 장시간 시청해 주셔서 아 장시간은 아니고 짧 상대적으로 짧은 시간인데 그래도 귀한 손님 모셔서 어, 오늘 좋은 얘기 들었습니다. 다음 기회에 또 모실 수 있으면 좋을 것 같고요. 네, 어, hope you have a good time in Korea. Thank you. Thank you. 네, 여기서 인사드리겠습니다. 감사합니다.